Hi Freaks and NRX, thanks for tuning in, welcome to this workshop. On my bench I have a 97 Stratocaster, which is in need of new frets. I thought it would be nice to share with you the process on how to do a maple refret. I'll be splitting up this tutorial in three parts. Let's crack on. Before we start pulling any frets, let's check out the guitar, see if there's any other shortfalls. I've been informed the tremolo system is blocked off years ago, since then there is a constant hum. Let's remove the cover plate and see what's going on. Well hello, that's a rather alternative way to block off a tremolo system. Let's remove that unnecessary stuff. It's funny what you can find sometimes in guitars. Anyways, check the ground. There is no ground. Let's install some springs. And check again. Let's make this tram great again. I'm not gonna go in detail how to set up a tremolo system. That's for another time. I'm just working in three springs. And check we have ground. Now, let's remove some other stuff. I'll be sending this paper to Microshim Heaven, as I don't think it fixed the rattling problem. A wee Allen key would have been a better tool to raise the saddle. Let's move on and check the neck relief. With my left hand, I fret the first fret. With my right pinky, I fret the 14th fret. Then, with my index finger, I move the string up and down around the 8th fret and feel how much relief we have. This is a bit much. Let's see if the truss rod still works, then tighten it by turning it clockwise. I don't think I have to mention you have to use correct fitting tools when working on guitars. Please be careful when inserting and turning the Allen key, unless you want to do a relic job. Then wiggle the thing about in the access hole until you have a result that looks like this. Every time you adjust something, you have to tune the guitar again. I first do this when the guitar is laying down, after I tune it in playing position. Unfortunately, I did not film this. Time to get the fancy tools out. This is the neck relief gauge. I first check the calibration on straight edge. It should read zero. Now I check the dead straight neck which I adjusted earlier by feel. Bang on. And I take string action notes at the 1st and 12th fret. You can do all this without these tools, but I have them, so I'll use them. I triple check the fretboard straightness with this notched straight edge. All looks mighty fine. Now it's time to remove the strings. I'm using a string winder to make it super duper fast. Believe me, I'm not that fast in real life. The customer is going for jumbo fret wire. I always measure the old frets, the width and the height. The height is all over the place. No wonder the strings are buzzing and rattling. I've put it on some rubber gloves to clean or rather disinfect the fretboard. I'm using lighter fluid here. Be careful. Chemicals can bite into the finish or even worse, into your skin. We're very close to pull the original frets out now. Before we do this, I like to run a scalpel along the bottom of the fret wire. It will help taking out the frets easier and ensures not to chip the fretboard finish. You'll see some lacquer jump off the frets. This is totally fine. If it was from the fretboard, it would be bad. Holding the scalpel in the correct angle is key here. Showing off my shop made fret pulling pliers. They're nothing more than end cutting nippers, which I grind it down flat on a grinding wheel. They can get under the fret easily to pull it upward. They are pretty cheap to buy and are easy to customize on a grinding wheel. Finally, we can pull the old frets out. The safest way doing this without chipping the fretboard is by heating them up with a 40 watt soldering iron. Go slowly, as you can burn the maple pretty fast. Oh yeah, I file a small slot in a soldering iron tip. This way it doesn't slide off the fret easily, because when it does, it leaves a nasty burn mark. As you can see, getting under the fret wire can be tricky. I reheat the fret wire. I'm not speeding up the footage here, so you can see how long it takes to heat up the fret wire in real time.
Let's try again. This end is not working along. Let's try the other end. Bingo! Now once you lifted one end, move the pliers along the fret wire, lifting it slowly but surely. Use a clean paintbrush to remove the debris. One more time. Heat up the fret wire, move the iron along the fret, don't keep it in the same spot too long. Get a tip of the pliers under one fret end and move along the whole length till you reach the other side. Then dust off. Once all the frets are out without chipping the fretboard, it's time to level out some stuff. There is some lacquer buildup where the frets used to sit. I like to use a small file to remove this buildup. I use my fingers as a guide so the file doesn't skate along the fretboard. Again, go slowly. Don't put too much pressure on the file. Gentle strokes does the trick. Once in a while, run your fingers across the fret slots. You will feel when the big bumps are gone. Using a straight edge, I double check the board. There are still some small bumps where the frets used to sit. With radius gauges, I check the fretboard. In this case, we have a 9.5 radius. To remove these tiny bumps, I'll be using a sanding beam. First, I put some painter's tape on the block. Then, I glue the 600 grid on with CA glue. It's very easy to remove the painter's tape and sandpaper combination. A lot less hassle than removing double sticky tape. I believe it's cheaper too. I will start off with 600 grit, then 1500, then a 2000 grit. With a prepped sanding block, I'll sand the fingerboard flat, moving up grits. I'm not sanding away loads of material. There is plenty of lacquer on this fretboard. I love this brush. After level sanding, the fretboard will look like this. Do not worry about these tiny scratches. We will polish the fretboard later. Unfortunately, this is the end of part one. Feel free to subscribe and thanks for watching. Hope to see you soon in part two.